What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And as you can see, we have a very special guest with us, and I will swing around and introduce her to you in just a moment. But I really want to thank you for joining us. Um, those of you who are watching live every week, you know how much I appreciate you. And by you being here with us today, it's us instead of just me, you know, you bring in your energy into the program. And that kind of directs and guides us a little bit as to the directions we'll be, we'll be talking about today. So today is all about choice. And it's all about change and how the two of those can work together so nicely. And in the moment, you may be thinking, yeah, Karen, right. But hang in there. Wait until the end of the show. And uh, then let's see if we've helped you alter that belief, maybe just a little bit. All right. So I really want to introduce you to this lovely lady that's sitting here beside me. This is Dr. Mary Marano. And Dr. Mary and I are relatively new acquaintances or friends. We met, an, oh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago now. So I guess not new, new. But I, uh, I asked Dr. Mary if she'd like to be on one of our shows just to bring, oh, I love her perspective on things. And I'm going to leave it like that. And you'll, you'll know what I mean as we go through. But let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Mary. So Dr. Mary Morano is the CEO and founder of Life and Family Counseling Services. With a wealth of experience spanning over three decades, Dr. Mary has the privilege of assisting numerous individuals, couples, and families on their transformative journeys. Holding a doctorate, doctorate sorry, in counseling and psychotherapy, Dr. Mary prioritizes her ongoing personal development to ensure her clients receive the most effective and up-to-date support. Renowned for her compassionate approach, Dr. Mary guides her clients through moments of despair to a place of optimism and ease. She actively engages in the therapeutic process, standing alongside her clients as they navigate towards self-awareness and growth. Whether through individual therapy, couples counseling, or family sessions, Dr. Mary fosters deep, deeper connections, empowering her clients to live authentically and enhance their relationships. While Dr. Mary doesn't undertake the journey for her clients, she serves as a steadfast companion, believing in their inherent strength and potential. That wraps up so much about what I think of you too, Dr. Mary. Like you are just this amazing being and the gifts you share with people. I mean, I wish I knew you a long time ago when I <laughs> needed your services, but that's okay. We, we got together here now. So welcome so much. I'm so Thank you. It's a joy to have you here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. You know, as you know, we go live every every week at this time on the Inspired Choices Network, where it really is my personal goal just to share new ideas with people, uh, help them see things from a different perspective. I'm always reminding everyone, you know, there's two sides to every coin. And I think that that will really help open up the doorway a little bit for people on today's topic. You know, when we're saying, you know, change is a choice. And that's a pretty bold statement. Um, I purposely made the title that way. Now we may have lost a couple of people coming on because of it, but that's okay. But I really do believe is it is a, a choice. And I've had people say it's not. Life is what it is. So mm. I'm assuming you agree with me. <laughs> Well, one of the things you'll often hear me say is change is not a skill. Change is a choice. I love that. And at the heart of personal growth and any relationship dynamic is change. 
And change will happen to us. And we think we have to adjust to those changes. But if we look at it from a different perspective and we look at it like we have a choice, it is actually very empowering to approach change that way. And I I love the title, by the way, of the podcast, Cultivating Kindness. And um, it's actually so beautiful because when we think of change, it can be daunting and scary. We can become rigid and resistant. But what if we could cultivate it with kindness? Right? Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. And that comes with, you know, compassion, self-compassion, you know. And if you were to go out into the world and you saw someone who was struggling, we would, you know, offer them compassion, you know, maybe a helping hand. So why wouldn't we do that if we were having our own struggle and if we were facing something in our life that was challenging? Uh, hopefully we could, you know, cultivate that with kindness. And yes. when it comes, yeah, and when it comes to change, um, you know, we could do the same thing because sometimes, you know, or I would say often, many people look at change uh, through that lens of resistance. I know I did for a long, long time. Yeah. I was definitely brought up in that idea that staying the same, not drawing attention to yourself and, you know, like just kind of keep your head. What was somebody said to me? Keep your head down, your mouth shut shut, and wear beige. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So just stay in the background, girl. Like, you know, like don't cause difficulties. Don't create waves. And so when you when you grow up feel that way, then, you know, the idea of change, it, it's it's there was a huge resistance to it. Um, but now. Not so much or I wouldn't be here. There's no question about it. I would not be on, I would not have taken a podcast, but I'll tell you, it took me a year. And I I guess it's been a year and a half now that Cultivating Kindness with Karen has been airing. But it took me a year to tell my family I had the podcast. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a whole that's a whole therapy session. I, I know, right? <laughs> uh, but, but think about, you know, if we go back for a minute to the message, you know, the messaging that we get, you know, like stay in the background, wear beige. I think that's like, you know priceless. Um, But think of the things that impact us, right? And I refuse to believe that people cannot change. And it's been my mission. And I know how hard like you're suggesting change can be when we have to like think of a ball of yarn with tiny, tiny little knots in it. And in order to change, we have to like pull apart all those little tiny knots in order to unravel the things that, you know, have impacted us over time, over our lifetime, from the messages that we've grown up with in our first families, Um, you know, then we get into relationships, and those relationships will mirror for us our unresolved childhood issues. So we have to work those things through. So when we're in relationship with others, we're really in relationship with ourselves through others. Yeah. And these become really eye-opening experiences. And we don't realize that, um, you know, with change is choice. And whether it's a new job, whether it's, you know, enhancing my relationship, it starts with a choice, an intentional decision. Nothing else can happen until we start there. Yes. And then even that awareness coming through that, oh, I think I would actually like something different. Or that awareness that, wait, this is just not comfortable for me anymore, or I'm feeling whatever. I'm not as happy as I'd like to be. But when that awareness hits, you know, that starts to crack open that door that there's a different possibility. And then that option for change, you know, it kind of starts to niggle in there at you. Yes. And once you plant the seed to change, right, look at what happens. We're now faced with all these different possibilities, right? 
And I remember sitting with a group of um, girlfriends and we would sit around and, you know, when you're with your girlfriends and you're, you know, complaining about things, we might complain about our partners and, you know, and I would be listening and I would say, you know, wow, they're really like complaining about their partners. And I really like my partner. So I thought, geez, I refuse to believe that, you know, I couldn't have a relationship where we could grow together right and and some of the messages were pretty you know derogatory when it came to men's ability i'm just using men right now just because of you know um partnership but uh that i'm in and i refuse to believe that jim didn't have the potential to change or grow and that was it for our relationship that it was just going to be like this and so what i started to do was i created a relationship list and I encourage anybody who's watching or listening, and you can do this after we get off the show today, to write out all of the things that you appreciate in a relationship. And this could be for a friendship as well. Write down all those things, that list of 50 things. Yeah, you know the 50 wants list that we do in our group, yeah. right? But do your 50 wants for relationship. And be really specific. Do you want kindness? Do you want compassion? Do you want someone who's emotionally regulated? Do you want good communication? And write down all those things and make it a really good list. That's part A. And then part B is you've got to go down that list and ask yourself, am I all those things on that list? Because that's where your personal work now comes in. Because you can't be, you can't ask someone to be a good communicator if you're someone who shuts down, if you're someone who's refusing to change. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when we start to look at it that way, then we say, oh my gosh, I've got some work to do. And I can make a choice in that moment to start showing up and being the best partner that I could be, or if I'm going for that new uh, job that I'm looking for, or a healthier lifestyle, it starts in that moment that I choose to change. And it doesn't mean that when I choose to change, it doesn't come with a new set of skills that I need to learn. That's very true. So true. But I really like that idea. You know, and I think I'm thinking to my own relationship, um, with my husband and he was you he he maintained the the belief that I could change mm. I was not the one that was really believing that I could change um, he's always seen something in me beyond what I've been able to see um, that's not the case now but that was well this fall will be 43 years that we'll be married so a good chunk of that, probably 38 years at least, he's been that step ahead of me, um, which has been amazing. Now, we both have that way of looking towards each other, and which is really cool. But it, you're so right, Jake, having somebody with you that can, and having that outlook is really important. But I love the question, you know, Am I those things that's on my list? That's a mm -hmm. really, really great exercise to go through. I'm going to do it after. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, what's, what's really powerful about the exercise is, you know, we can really get into a rut in our relationships, thinking that it's someone else's responsibility to make my life better. Right. And, wouldn't, there. That be, and, and wouldn't that be wonderful? Right. Um, and then we have these expectations of other people and how they should change. And then we get disappointed. Mm -hmm. All right. When the responsibility, you know, this this is sort of how relationships, you know, will work. Right. Um, it's it's easy to blame someone else for why my life might not be going the way that I want it. And, you know, and it's hard for me to look at the world through that different lens, which is accountability, because if I have to be accountable for things, then that requires me to look at myself and to change. Right. So we always go back to, you know, the heart of personal growth. 
and relationship dynamics is change. Yeah, very much so. And I know both you and I firmly believe that, you know, for us anyways, it's our job to be 100% responsible for all areas of our life and our part in any relationship or whatever we're doing. You know, even if, you know, like today, you know, we're both 100% responsible for, for showing up and, you know, what we're looking to bring to everybody, you know, who's watching the show now and on the recordings. When you step into that, it just offers you actually so much more freedom. That blame game really limits what you're going to be able to do and how you're going to be able to look at the world. And so I, uh, I love the idea that I know that I'm 100% responsible for any actions I take or thoughts that I have, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard sometimes for people to wrap their head around and acknowledge. There's a beautiful quote, and it reads, a miracle is a shift in perception. Love it. Okay, hold that thought, though. Okay. okay. We're going to go, we're going to leave everybody hanging on that one. We, we have to go to our first break here. But I love that. I'm really into miracles. That's cool. <laughs> All right, yeah, everyone. Okay. We have our first break here. So don't go away. We've got so much more to share with you with myself, Karen Leslie, and my wonderful guest, Dr. Mary. So hang in there. Maybe think about what Dr. Mary just shared with you. And we'll continue this conversation here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen here on the Inspired Choices Network. So don't go away, everyone. We'll be right back. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. And I just want to remind you what you just heard. You can always get in touch with me. You can send me an email, karen at karenlesley.ca. And we will also be putting in the show notes everything for Dr. Mary as well. But I want to just actually give a shout out. I know, Michael, you're listening. And I so appreciate your email that you sent in. And I am always open to answering questions and, you know, chatting with people. So all you need to do is reach out. Email's great. You can also find me on all the different social media platforms as well. But uh Know that you're not alone out there, and there's lots of people who are willing to listen, and you can jump into any and all of the shows on the Inspired Choices Network and come into the chat room and ask questions and be a part of the show if you would like. So don't forget that. Remember. Anyways, I want to go back now to Dr. Mary, and can you start us off again with that quote, and we'll sort of pick up that conversation again? Absolutely. The quote is, a miracle is a shift in perception. And so in any given moment, 
if you look at a situation just slightly different, the whole situation changes. And it's like choice, right? Um, choice is an instant decision that we make, an instant direction that can happen, which is different than a skill, right? Mm -hmm. A skill is something that we practice and we repeat over time, um, you know, but a choice is something that can happen instantaneously and can change the whole course of what happens next. Absolutely. And that feeling inside of us when we, we choose something different or we make that new choice. I mean, if you con stay connected to your body and you feel that instant response, that can be so motivating and help you actually to take that next step, to do that action, to put that choice into, into your life, into creating what you want next. And I think so many people aren't connected into their bodies. And so when they have that thought that, oh, I'd like to do something different or I'd like to make a choice, it's more, it's more difficult to take that next action step when they're stuck just in that thinking mind. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's interesting that I um, that sometimes we um, mix up, right? So people think we need to be motivated to do something and then change happens. But we have to rewind because it's actually those small action steps that we take, right? So that's kind of like, you know, we say that that repetition of those steps. And then through those action steps, even if they're 10 small steps, 10 small steps is, is really good, right? Because we're on our way to seeing change. And the moment, it's kind of like when people go to the gym and they start, you know, nobody likes to go to the gym, but they take those small action steps. Maybe there's some people that like to go to the gym. I shouldn't say that, um, you know, but what happens is that we start to see the change in our bodies or our energy levels or our sleep. And then we start to like the change that we see. And then we're motivated to keep doing more of the things. And that's through change. That's through action and change. And it started with a choice though, right? The choice to get up and go to the gym, right? And that was the moment, that instant that you made a decision in another direction. And we can do that in any area of our life, really. Yeah. I mean, I've heard so often people say, well, I'm, I'm just not feeling motivated to do it. Or I just don't feel motivated to, to look at doing something differently. And so they've got it backwards mm -hmm. from what you're just saying. Absolutely. Right. We do a lot of complaining. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and when we, we you know, and it's OK to complain. Right. Um, however, we can stay in that. Right. And in psychology, we can stay in what we call a contemplation phase and we can stay in that for years and years and years and get stuck in thinking that I have to make those changes until we actually move into an action phase. And sometimes we don't do that until we've really, really exhausted ourselves into you know, um, okay, I know I should, and I know I should, I, and I will, and I will, until finally we start to action something, and then change really starts to move and take shape, and we see our life going in another direction, yeah. right? Or sometimes our, our life or our body will start to demand that we look at things different. We can run into situations where I don't want to say you don't have the choice, but it becomes, it's like that two by four that hits you on the head and you go, okay, fine. I get it. You know? Yeah. Well, we do have choices even when the two by four hits us on the head, right? Um, we can choose to stay miserable in our life or we can choose something else, right? Um, we can choose ease. We can choose joy, happiness, fun. And sometimes, you know, um, when we go back to what are the messages that we learned about living life in a particular way? Because if we got those messages that life was hard, life is a grind, keep your head down, wear, you know, wear beige and, beige. <laughs> and blend in, you know. Um, and sometimes those are the things that stop us from, you know, choosing to change. 
right? And it's not a skill. And I can remember sort of being beige myself. And, you know, when you when you grow up in environments where you uh, don't feel safe emotionally, sometimes that can happen, we can develop all these different parts, right? We can be a people pleaser, we can be a controller, we can be an anger monger, we can be all these parts. And it takes some t- it takes that consciousness to undo that way of thinking. But again, it starts with that choice to change. Yeah. And the awareness that that's how we think, you know, our thoughts are so rapid and there's, you know, 60, 80,000 of them every day. And to be able to, again, make a choice, like to choose to say, okay, I'm actually going to listen to what I'm saying to myself or listen to how I speak or think and to have the awareness of just, well, many different things, how stuck we can be or how resistant we are to another possibility. Like it's, we live so much on autopilot Mm -hmm. that even to recognize how much of your day is on autopilot can feel like it's too much, but what a gift it is, you know. Yeah. Well, one of the things that um, when it comes to change that I always go back to as an example is the pandemic. Right. So how many times did we hear, oh, my God, I can't change. That's just the way that I am. No, that's just the way you want to be. But when you're when we go back to the pandemic, we were forced to change. We were being told, you need to change. Our whole life changed. How we operated changed. Businesses changed. Work environments changed. The relationship dynamics changed. You know, we were forced. And it felt terrible to be forced to change and to adjust because we didn't have the choice to do that. Now, imagine if we could embrace change by choice. You know, it gives so much freedom. Yes. Right? Because you feel part of the equation versus it happening at you or to you, right? And when we can engage in it and feel that we're part of it, it really changes so much in, well, in how we're going to choose to be. Like, I I don't, I want to actually find another word for that, but that awareness that you matter in the process and that you have input into it gives you so much freedom to how you want to come out on the other side absolutely at any time and if you made it and if you made a choice that you didn't like or didn't suit you guess what you can do karen new choice <laughs> absolutely <laughs> isn't that amazing and you know and people will ask me all the time what what is your definition of empowerment and it's my ability to be able to choose yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. and we have no limit on number of choices you know i mean women for ever you know we've been either kidded about it or maybe been quite derogatory but you know that you're, we're always changing our mind. Well, you know, bonus for us <laughs> because we actually have a sense of what it's like and to be able to pivot and that. Now, mm-hmm. often, though, I will admit that it's usually done for others more so than for ourselves. But even if you see that and you recognize that you can pivot and make new choices in your relationships or doing something for another person, That's amazing because then you know you have the skill set to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we can probably go into many extensions of, (laughs) you know, uh, some of that. But you're absolutely right. Um, You know, we have the ability to choose which direction that we want to go in. You know, and sometimes um, when we don't, um, you know, sometimes we might second guess ourselves or, you know, um, we may not feel confident in the choices that we're making. Those are likely attached to some of that old history, right? Perhaps some negative core beliefs that we're holding about ourselves, 
right? It could have been from those families that we grew up in. Did we grow up in a rigid family? Did we grow up in some kind of dysfunction? Remember, we have our functional adult, but we have our adaptive child. And our adaptive child doesn't stay in childhood. It follows us into, you know, our adult life and shapes our adult love. So if we had to navigate through an environment that was scary or wasn't emotionally safe or there was lots of conflict, right, we might second guess ourselves. And, you know, as we do some personal growth or self-development, should I encourage everyone to do not just to come into therapy or do some self-development because you're in a crisis, but do it voluntarily. It's kind of like choice and change. If you do it voluntarily, it doesn't feel so big and scary um, and like you're forced to do something. When I choose that, um, I also get to choose how I feel about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, that aspect of more freedom, you know, because you're you're part of the process, you know, a, you're walking by books and a title catches your eye, well, pause, look at that title. Like what, what is it about that title that really caught your attention, you know? Mm -hmm. And nowadays, I mean, you can, you have access to so many ways to explore different areas that you would like to work through or in or around that, you know, wasn't, well, it's been an option online now for, for a few decades, but, it has grown so much. And that's also, I think, one of the pandemic's gifts to us as well, is that we have the ability to access so much and a lot for free. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much there. And I'm going to pause us here again because we have to go for another commercial rake. <laughs> okay. But yeah, but, you know, one of the things with Cultivating Kindness with Karen is that it is a resource that I love to have out there that is free yes and it's it's shared around the world literally i mean inspired choices network is amazing at, at what it does for all of its hosts and i'm so grateful and happy to be a part of this company but the one of my goals was to be able to have information out there that is is free for anybody and everybody to, you know, listen to or to share or to save or whatever they want. So anyways, enough of that. We're going to go for our um, second break here on the Inspired Choices Network. Thank you so much to everyone who's here watching us live and those of you who are listening to the replays. It's always a joy to know that you're here with us. And I'm Hope you're enjoying. I'm sure actually it feels very much like you're enjoying when I tap in, you know, to the conversations that I'm having today with Dr. Mary Morano. It's such a thrill to have her here with us. So don't go away because both Dr. Mary and I have a lot more that we're going to share with you when we come back from this short break. So um, just hang tight, everybody. We'll see you really soon. Thanks. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. 
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're enjoying our time together as much as I am. I wanted to um, just bring bring something in. Those of you who watch the show all the time, you know I use uh, Oracle cards in setting up every show. And I did the same today, even though, you know, I kind of had a real sense of what was going to possibly come through today with Dr. Mary. But one of the things I just want to bring to your attention and which I just love how it always fits in is this is from one of the cards your thoughts and words and actions are like magnets drawing the energy that creates and cultivates your world so we've been talking a little bit in the first two segments a little bit about sort of our resistance to making choices for change and we we're getting into in the last segment how actually when you make that choice and you move forward with it even with a small step or two how freeing and empowering and like there's so much that is offered to you as a result of taking that step. And this quote really opens it up even more saying that by making that choice, you open up so much your thoughts, your words, your actions, they start to draw in what it is you truly would desire. And it, it's there to help you with moving forward in that change that you're seeking. I don't know. How does that resonate with you, Dr. Mary? Well, it kind of makes me uh, think about us not being at the mercy of our circumstances, but in control of our destiny. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're saying something really important about our words, our actions, our thoughts. Um, you know, in my world, in psychotherapy, right, when we talk about cognitive behavior work, those three things are the trinity, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. And in that triangle, right, um, it works where um, it's all interchangeable. Right. So if I'm having negative thoughts, I'm likely going to feel crummy and I'm likely going to engage and choose negative behaviors. Yeah. If I'm feeling crummy, it's likely I'm thinking something crummy. Right. We feel what we think. And again, I'm going to choose some actions that may not be you know, very favorable or might be more unpopular than I would if I was thinking something that was more positive. And so it's very powerful to know that at any time I can choose something different. I can choose to think differently. I can be mindful of what I'm choosing to say to myself about myself. I can decide how long I want to sit in a particular feeling. I can choose my behaviors. And if I recognize, because sometimes we are doing things very unconsciously, right? There's these automatic habits that we go into. But the moment I recognize, oh, my gosh, I'm doing that thing again, I can choose something different, which is really powerful. It is so powerful. And, you know, one of the things that I'm a really big believer in is the power of a question. Mm -hmm. You know, from an energetic perspective, which is my background, you know, every time you ask a question, you actually shift the energy within your body and around you just in that actual moment. And so when like for what you're saying with, you know, you're thinking something and you're and you're you're feeling what you're these similar. I lost the word. There was a dynamic word I wanted to, that came in and out. That happens a lot. But the, you know, just to be able to pause and say, okay, so what's a different thought I could have in this moment so that I'm mm -hmm. not feeling as down or whatever it might be, you know, like the power of a yeah. question. And, and that's sort of the reframing, right, of that thought. And it kind of goes back to a miracle is a shift in perception. And the moment we see that situation just slightly different, look at what happens, right? We choose that. So it's that like choice is that instant that we make that choice. We go somewhere else with it. And it doesn't have to be negative. We can choose that. We can mm -hmm. choose to stay stuck. We can choose not to move. Um, but the moment we decide to prioritize something different and make that commitment, the whole situation that we find ourselves in will change. Yeah. 
And I love to use actually the phrase, the word, I put it as one word, maybe technically it's not, but mind shift versus mm -hmm. mindset. You know, I find that mindset, just the word set, you know, set in my ways, set in my thoughts. Like, it's like, it's a done deal. This is my mindset mm -hmm. where I will refer to mind shift. The word shift to me has action and flow and implies that something different, you know, is available to us. You know? Yeah. Can I take that and can I like enhance it by saying, mind gym so oh. in my work right mm -hmm. we do mind gym and it's like going to the gym for our bodies right what do we do we exercise we build strength we build muscle you know those repetitive actions we see the change it's no different than when we do mind gym right we're doing that to build those muscles to be able to change those thought patterns to raise those levels of awareness to be able to catch those negative thoughts to reframe them um because if you think about when we have negative thoughts we we talk about those negative thoughts to ourselves with such passion and gusto and like we say my god i'm so stupid i can't believe i did that i'm such a loser and we say it with with force we never say oh my god like i'm amazing and wow look at all the amazing things i'm doing we don't do that there's no little cheerleader that sits on the end of our bed and says you're amazing that comes from that mind gym right and building that as a muscle and building, that's why change is not a skill, it's a choice. And then we use the skills to repeat and practice and build them so they're nice and strong. So we can keep that up. Doesn't mean we, you know, we're going to bypass our emotions or we're, you know, this is not toxic positivity where we don't acknowledge that things, you know, will take a dip or we'll, you know, have a bad moment and, we get to choose how long we stay in those moments. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does. I really like that mind gym. And I'm one of those people that used to love going to the gym. So I can really get behind that word. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it, yeah. it, it really expands it. Thank you for sharing that. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Is it okay if I borrow it now and then? <laughs> I say to everybody steal my words you know if it's something that fits for you take it and run with it because you know and it's interesting in the work that I do I might say something to somebody over and over and over again and I might reinforce you know the points or we might have had this conversation you know several times and then one day they come in and say oh my god I watched this thing and the person said this which I might have said, you know, a hundred times over, but in that moment, you know, they heard it differently. It landed for them differently. So absolutely, you know, take it, share it, um, you know, spread it. Uh, Cause you know what, if this um, consciousness that we're talking about today, this awareness um, is out there and it helps one person, if one person was watching today or listening um and they shifted in some kind of way they had a feeling you know maybe they're getting excited about change and realizing you know their ability to choose that they can change their it's like a switch yeah you can do it at any time you just have to make the choice to do it yeah and then when you do right like you because i think we have most people anyways will have personal examples that are locked away into their their mind of oh I tried and it didn't work and I I tried and I can't do it and you know mm -hmm. I really have tried to change and so my first thought is mm, have you <laughs> <laughs> careful there might be some judgment in there <laughs> absolutely there is there is and from the perspective of understanding what it means when I've tried you know, and mm -hmm. I love the etymology in, in words. And so I'll often go back to that when I'm working with people, too. But it's this it's this phrase that I know both you, you and I know, too. Like, you know, you've got one foot on first base, 
and I'm speaking baseball here for people, and you really want to go to the, to the second base, but you're refusing to lift your your foot off the first base. You you've got your legs stretched as far as you can go, mm-hmm. and may, and that's maybe your definition of of try because you 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 did pick up one foot and put it out there, but then you brought it back, and you're still looking where you were hoping to go, but we're when we're unable to get there, and so it's different definitions of of what trying is and there is Mm -hmm. no wrong definition it's just key to know what yours is yeah well and it's interesting um you know so if you think of a couple right that's in a relationship and they're struggling with their communication right you can teach them a new communication skill Mm -hmm. but that communication skill doesn't work unless they choose to prioritize change and then commit to it. Yes, that follow through, right? And then they can use the skills to communicate more effectively, right? But it always starts with that choice to change. Yeah. 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 All right. We are at our third and final break, Dr. Mary. So hold on there and we will, everybody, we'll see if we can figure out how to wrap all this up in our next segment. It's been a joy sitting here and uh, and sharing with Dr. Mary and bringing forward new perspectives, hopefully, or a slightly different way of looking at at change and choice. And if you were one of those people at the beginning of the show where you're like, Mm, change is not a choice I hope we've cracked open a couple of little doors or windows for you and that maybe now you're thinking oh maybe it is and maybe you will look at yourself with a more empowered way of getting to know who you are a little differently and taking that step to look at something from a slightly different perspective it could be absolutely amazing for you but you'll only know one way and that's to have the courage to give it a try. So we'll be back with all of you in just a moment. This is our third and final break. It's a really short one, so don't go away, everybody. And we'll have more with Dr. Mary and myself, Karen Leslie. Thanks, everyone. We'll be right back. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. We are winding things down a little bit here with Dr. Mary and myself, and this whole conversation that change is a choice is really a, an important one. And this was one of the reasons that I you know, wanted to have Dr. Mary join me on my show, because I know, but you know, for a fact that this is something that she embraces and that she's brought into her own life as well as I have, because had we not, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be on this pod. Well, there wouldn't even be a podcast for the two of us <laughs> to be here on had I not made some different choices myself. And I think one of the beauties, but maybe some people are uncomfortable with it, but one of the beautiful aspects of stepping into making a new choice and taking those steps for that change to come forward is really the vastness as to where it can take you. Because one little choice that you choose to make now towards a change you would love to have in your life 
can cascade with so many other opportunities. And it's like a, that first gift that just never stops gifting back to you until you maybe choose to stop choosing to change. But as long as you're in that space, oh my gosh, the world just opens up. And I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that, Dr. Mary, right, in your, in your own life. Absolutely. Well, that's why I say change is not a skill, change is a choice. And um, it's so freeing to be able to um, look at every aspect of our life that way. And for me, when I'm faced with a challenge, the first thing I say is, okay, Mary, you're getting ready to grow again. And, you know, and when that happens, um, you know, and again, it, sometimes it could look like an obstacle, right, or an opportunity, depending on how we choose to look at that situation, right? So we're not at the mercy of that situation or circumstance, you know, we're in control of our destiny. So I really do hope that, you know, for those people who um, might be saying, oh, change is not for me, or I can't change, and that there's, you know, a little bit of a shift uh, today in, you know, being open to more of the possibility of change in, you know, um, with more ease. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, we have so many little phrases that we say all the time that take us away from wishing to choose change. I'm too old to change. You can't, you know, an old dog can't Mm -hmm. learn new Mm -hmm. tricks. Change is hard. Like there's just, I'm sure if, if, you know, at another time, if we sat down, we would write down dozens of things that we've heard. And you mm-hmm. probably have even more because of with, you know, the, the patients and people that you work with, you will have heard more than I will have. Mm-hmm. But we really should start fostering coining phrases to unravel that and to work towards the positive of change. Yes. You know, like what if we, started saying, well, I have a grandchild on its way. So what if I was to always say to this little guy when he arrives, things like, you know, change will lead you to more, right? Mm -hmm. Making that choice will give you more, you know, like don't be afraid to choose to try that. Like if we were always phrasing things that way in a couple of generations, because it'll take a bit of time, but we could really be fostering a very different way of looking at our own personal lives. Yes, I think you make a really excellent point there, right? When we think of the generational transmissions or the generational patterns that filter through families, through relationships and, you know, into our unborn children. So as you talk about welcoming a grandchild into the world, imagine that kind of messaging. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, and we could, you know, expand that to so many other areas, um, you know, of the world and the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. Imagine if um, it was that positive and, you know, that openness or the possibility of things looking and feeling different in our life. Wow. Yeah. You know, and even the parent that may not fully buy into it, but is really going to choose to work with that just hearing themselves say those words over and over again is going to have a positive effect on them too. Like it's absolutely, I can't see how it could not do that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. We are really winding down here. We only have a a minute or two left. So um, I would like to remind everybody um, to join in again next week. Now, Dr. Mary won't be with me, but that's okay. Maybe she'll come (laughs) back another day. We'll see. (laughs) Um, But Next week's show is on managing downloads and activation. So we're going a little more back into Karen's woo-woo world a little bit next week. But um, I'm sure we'll still have an awesome conversation. And I just want to remind everyone, too, right, that everything is meaningless until you give it meaning. And I really think Dr. Mary and I have been saying that in maybe a little more roundabout way today. But the fact is how you choose to look at something is how it's going to show up for you. And you're the person that has said, oh, that's not good, or oh, that's gonna be great. And you can make a different choice and you can choose to look at it in a different way. It's up to you. Anyways, Dr. Mary, thank you so much for being here. We are down to seconds. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining me today. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. 
Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.